Hello, my name is Tatlun Penry. I'm a solitary pagan witch, I'm an author and the founder of the Wolf and Howl Press. And this, believe it or not, is my third time of trying to do this video. It's been chaotic out here, so if I seem a bit distracted, that's all it is. Tonight's theme is Imbolc, and that's why I'm sitting in the dark. Because for me it's a festival of light, and you don't really get to appreciate light unless you have some darkness first. Um, so. I've never been a great one for saying we have to celebrate on a certain day. Uh, I think sometimes it's something you feel. Um, the year changes gear. That's It certainly changes gear, the equinoxes and the solstice. I mean, it's very, very uh, noticeable. But even the lesser festivals, something changes, something happens to make that day special. Um, give you an example, when my children were young, uh, we always used to find that Thursdays were utterly chaotic, absolutely hellish. If anything was ever going to happen of uh, a stressful nature, it was always on a Thursday. They would come home from school, there'd be chaos, there'd be tears, one thing and the other, and it was always a Thursday. And of course Thursdays were uh, sacred to the great thunder gods and sky gods, people like Zeus and Jupiter and um, Thunor, Thor, um, they were very much those those kind of gods and I think sometimes the energies that that still lingered if you like, I think sometimes they do rub off on us and if you're a little bit sensitive you tend to pick up on it. Um, so uh, going to, back to what I said, I think you, you get a feel for when the festivals really occur for you because I suspect they're slightly different for all of us and um, my own suggestion would be that whatever time you decide to celebrate not a bad idea to do something with light at some point either the night before you celebrate or on the night of that day not a bad idea because you are showing um, you're showing that you're bringing light into your life into your path and of course, if you really study the, um, if you study the, uh, the weather around you and the days around you, I mean, we've had appalling weather here, oh, for about two months now. It's been dreadful. It's been nearly constant rain and dark skies, and the idea of light is something that's very, very hard to, to envisage. The days are not light. They're always a bit dark. You feel like a mole some days. You're in a tunnel. It's horrible. Um, we've had so much rain, in fact. We've had a little landslip down the bottom of the valley and it's gone and uh, all fallen onto the railway line. So the top of the valley is, is cut off that way. Um, so, yes, you do need to get a feel for it. But even though you, you have weather like we've had, you notice the days are getting a little bit longer, a little bit lighter at night. You know, whereas before it would be pitch dark at uh, about half past four, it's getting a little bit better now. You know, it's stretching. It's that sense of stretching. You know, like you stretch in the mornings. You yawn, you stretch, you wake up. Um, and it's that kind of feeling. I think that's what the earth is doing. So when you celebrate in bulk, sometimes people are like, well, I can't envisage it. Well, I'd say two things. One is light. And the other one is to look forward to something you're going to do. So you could even put on your little tray or plate or little little area where you want to focus. It doesn't have to be an altar. Um, but in this area, I would put something like a tea light, a candle, battery operated light and something you want to do in the near future. Something like a packet of seeds you intend to plant, you know, a packet of sunflower seeds or couple of bulbs or something because it is just to draw attention to the light. The days are getting longer, things are starting to change and you have plans for the coming year. That's a very good way to celebrate a rather tricky little festival like this. So any ideas? I hope you enjoyed them and thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.